So one thing people have been asking me about a lot lately is how exactly Vulkan's permission system works. And so today I'm going to walk you through Vulkan's uh, permissions example, which is actually based on the Instagram example, but with a few added complexities when it comes to who can do what. So first of all, if you haven't done the Instagram example, I suggest you, you do that first just to be familiar with the components and the collections and so on. But if you already have, uh, then let's talk about the permissions. So we basically have um, five types of users here. First of all, we have the anonymous users who don't have accounts and they belong to the, the guests user group by default. And uh, we won't really focus on them too much because you know, if you don't have an account, you can't really do much. Uh, second group of users are members. So these are regular users who just created an account. And in our uh, Instagram example here, they'll be able to leave comments. So just add a comment like this. And they'll also be able to uh, edit their own comments and delete them, but that's about it. Uh, one thing they will not be able to do is add a photo. So by the way, uh, here currently I'm logged in as admin. So admin is the third user group and admins can do anything. So anytime you define a new action, uh, if you test for that action, if the user is an admin, the test will return true. The user will be allowed to perform the action. Um, so these are the three basic uh, default user groups. And then we are adding two other user groups, which are um, photographers and moderators. So photographers can upload new images. They can post photos. And then moderators cannot uh, upload photos. You can see they don't have the upload link here. But what they can do is moderate other users' comments. So they can, uh, you know, either modify a comment or mark it to be deleted. And uh, here you see I've deleted this comment. And as you can see, it's not appearing here anymore. Uh, if you are a moderator or if you are uh, an admin, on the other hand, uh, it will appear. So uh, how do we set up all these different permissions? Now, let's look at our code. So first of all, you can see in my package file, I've enabled the permissions example, and I've also enabled the admin package because this is how we will set uh, user groups, how we will assign user groups to specific users. And then everything else is here in the permissions package. So let's take a look. Um, you can ignore uh, most of this client, server, static style sheets, those are all the same as the Instagram example. Components is almost exactly the same, except that here in the header, um, where do we have our upload link here? Before displaying our upload um, link, so this one right here, we have this test to see if the user can perform the action named pick stop new. And if they cannot, then we don't show them the link. That makes sense. Apart from that, uh, I think the components are the same as the Instagram example. So again, you can refer to that. Oh, actually one more difference. Uh, I forgot here, if the comment is deleted, uh, we just add the comments item deleted class to it. And then we use that to show like the uh, strike through and lower the opacity a little bit, just, you know, as a way to indicating that the comment is deleted. So, but yeah, that, that's it. So all the other interesting stuff happens in uh, modules here. So we have uh, these two directories, comments and picks, and then we have this permissions JS file, which is where all the magic happens. And I've um, 
uh, aggregated all the permissions for comments and pics just to make it easier to follow along. So first here you'll have a recap of all the different groups and what they can do. So guests, uh, again, that's user who don't have an account. So just random visitors who haven't done anything yet with the site, so they can do nothing. They can't interact. They can only see content. Uh, members, people who have created an account, on the other hand, can submit new comments, edit their own comments, and also delete them. Photographers can do everything a member can, and that's important because, um, you know, a, f a photographer, any user with special permissions, is a user, they are a member, so they will inherit automatically everything members can do. So photographers can also post uh, and edit comments. In addition, they can submit new photos and edit their own photos. And then mods, moderators, they can do everything a member can, again. In addition, they can view deleted comments and they can edit other users' comments. That's probably the, the key part here. Uh, you'll notice every other user group, they can only uh, do things with uh, their own documents, documents they've created themselves, but mods can edit other people's. So that, that's pretty key. And then admins, again, they can simply do everything. So let's move down the file. The first thing we do is create our two new custom groups, photographers and mods. And then we uh, assign these groups uh, actions that they can perform. So first, uh, members, the default group, um, they can you know, the, do all these. Uh, mods can do these. And again, any group will inherit from members. So they can, in essence, do all these six actions. And then photographers also have their own special three actions, but again, they also inherit from these three. Um, so what can mods and photographers do? Well, mods can do the view deleted uh, action uh, for comments and also the edit all and remove all actions. Photographers can do new edit own and remove own for pics. And then again, admins can just do everything basically. Now. What I want to point out here is that these uh, these actions are just character strings, right? So um, it's just a convention that they're uh, formatted this way, structured this way with the name of the collection and then the action and then uh, a modifier. But what's important is mostly that we use the same uh, string, the same name when checking for the action. So I could, you know, change that into whatever I want as long as I call that again. So basically what we want to figure out is, well, where are these actions uh, called? And this one, for example, comments edit own, it's going to be called whenever we try to edit a comment. And this means in the mutation. So in this case, we are using the default mutations. So we are not explicitly writing out our own mutation code, but we are just uh, referring to the boilerplate defaults provided by Vulkan. And if we go check out the edit uh, default mutation, uh, it has a check function. And the logic isn't that complex. First, we check if the user is logged in. We check if there is actually a document being passed. And uh, if either of these fail, we return false. We abort the mutation. Now, if that turns out to, um, to be OK, we move on to first check if the user owns the document. If they do, we check if they are able to perform the comments edit own action. So if they don't own the document, we check if they can perform the comments edit all action. So. Let's go back to our permissions file. You can see that this is exactly the action that we gave to the mods user group, right? So this is how mods are able to edit other people's uh, comments. Now, something that I need to point out, if we were writing our own resolvers, our own mutation resolvers, we could also just test here uh, if users 
if the user belongs to the mods group, right? But the reason we use the action system is that um, this way the check can function independently from the groups. So what I mean by this is because we check the action comments at its own, uh, we could say that we are adding yet another new user group called, uh, you know, uh, managers, let's say, and also say that they can perform this action without having to go back and edit our mutations file. And obviously, since this is a, a default mutation, uh, it's part of Vulkan core, you cannot edit it. So this is where having this uh, two tiered permission system with groups on one hand and actions on the other comes in really handy. It's, it gives you a bit more, uh, you know, margin to play with between your uh, mutations and your permissions. But again, this is how the default uh, mutation resolvers are written. If you are writing your own, you don't really don't have to use this. It's uh, op optional. So you could also just test based on user groups or even on any other uh, property of the current user object. But for now, let's stick with our uh, group system. So what else do we have here? Uh, remove all, that's also going to be a, a default uh, check here, collection remove own or collection remove all, same principle. It's going to be the same for picks. So basically the only uh, custom action we have that doesn't um, come in the default mutation resolvers is this one, view deleted. And you'll, no you'll notice it's, it's a bit different, right? Because it concerns uh, viewing content and not uh, editing or inserting or removing content. So it's not a mutation. Instead, it concerns uh, the query resolver. Now, if we go check the collection file for uh, comments again, we can see we are also using uh, a default set of resolvers for comments. But resolvers are a bit different in that they don't check uh, the action themselves. In instead, they call the check access function. And check access is a function that you can define on your collection, as we were doing right here. It takes two arguments, the current user and the current document, and it simply says whether the user can access the document or not. And so this is where we will test for um, our comments view deleted action. What we're saying is if the user is an admin or if the user owns the current comment, we return true. In other, in other words, we let them access and view the comment. If not, we check if the comment is deleted. If it is deleted, we uh, see if the user can view deleted comments. If it's not deleted, it's just a regular comment and we return true. Um, so we could probably refactor this and check this first. Um, but, you know, it kind of amounts to the same thing in the end. And that's about it, really. That's how we uh, set up our permissions through groups and actions. Uh, the last part of the puzzle is how to actually assign uh, actions or rather groups. Sorry, I'm getting all mixed up how to assign groups to specific users. And you can do that through the admin panel. So here I have my users. You can see this one has uh, the mods group. And maybe let's say I want to make it a photographer so I can submit. And might need to reload because uh, of a little uh, bug here, but you can see it works. We have this group. Uh, let's say I make Julia uh, a mod. So let's reload. It works. So this is an easy way to uh, to assign user groups to individual users. And in the back end, all it does is just add uh, this to the groups property on the user object. So I can even uh, inspect maybe, sorry, this one. Let's close this. Um, 
find our user. And yeah, you can see they have a groups property, an array with just a list of groups. So super simple, nothing uh, complicated here. And that's about it. That's how uh, permissions work in Vulkan. So let me know if you have any questions. As you can see, it's not a super complex system, but it's fairly flexible. And uh, you can do a lot with it, basically. So uh, looking forward to your feedback. Come say hello in the Slack chat room and see you soon for the next video.